Real estate agents, do you want to move your business forward? Well, I'm here to help. Hey guys, Brittany with Brittany Hannon Real Estate. I'm a real estate agent, coach, and investor. And every Monday at 1130 Pacific Standard Time, I'm here to bring you information that's gonna help move your business forward. Whether you're a brand new beginner or an advanced top producer, I'm going to bring you key tips and tricks and strategies to move your business forward. This is your official invitation to join us live every Monday at 11.30 a.m. They're totally free. And if you want more information about coaching, check the link in my bio and I would love to help. Now let's jump into this week's workshop. This is my first time in the new year being with you guys. So welcome, happy new year. I know it's midway, if not almost the end of January already. This is crazy. So Today we're talking about how to get to your peak performance. We wanna talk about the top 10 habits of top producers. Now today what we're gonna do is we're going to go through this in a way that is going to kind of be a brief overview. But what I want you to do is I want you to pull out one or two of these key tenants and implement them. Figure out how you're gonna implement them and what you're gonna do. So. Um, we're going to dive in and we're going to talk a little bit about how to use command to actually implement some of these things, because of course, we don't want to just talk about what we're doing. This is a workshop. We actually want to jump in and really do what we're talking about. So uh, where we're going today, we're going to talk about what are those habits of the top producers, and we're actually going to combine habits and the action. So this is going to be a combo and this is going to be kind of the bulk of what we're talking about, but then we're also going to dive into command and see how some of, uh, some of these things that we're talking about, we can actually utilize in command. And so we're going to talk about that today. Then at the end, we're going to talk about how to win what's important now. And then our bonus, of course, make sure you stay till the end for the bonus. All right. So what are the 10 habits of top producers? We're gonna go one by one and we're gonna kind of dive into each one as we go. So number one, top producers make goals. They set goals, they track their goals. Now, as we go, um, I'm gonna be diving into these, uh, each of these kind of in the next few weeks. So like I said, this is kind of a um, 10,000 foot view and then we're going to dive in. But we've been talking about goals a lot, basically since October uh, into November, we've really been talking about what are your goals for 2024? So now we're in 2024, we're almost all the way through January. We, I mean, 2024 is going to fly by in the blink of an eye. So we want to make sure that you know what are your goals? Top producers know exactly what their goals are. It doesn't just mean that they know how many houses they want to close, although they know that. It also means that they want to, uh, they want to know how much money they need to make to be able to accomplish the goals that they set forward. So if they said, okay, I need to bring in $150,000 and they're median average commission is 15,000, then they understand I need to close 10 deals. So it's pretty much as easy as that. And remember, we've talked about this ad nauseum um, in the last quarter, basically. In the last quarter of the year, it was all about gearing up and setting you up for success in this new year. So make sure that you have your goals. We're not gonna dive into that. Although, remember, you can do that in command. So make sure that you're doing your goals and make sure that you are connecting your goals in command because it helps you to take action today. Remember, just knowing your goal is not going to get you to take action. You have to make sure that you know your goal and you're able to work backwards from there and say, okay, if I need to close, if I want to make $150,000, my average commission is 15,000, so I need to close 10 deals. That means for 10 deals, I know that I need to have this many in escrow. It means that I need to have this many in um, appointments. It means that I need to make this many contacts each day. 
And then that gives you the action that you need to take. You need to know based on your goals, what is the action that I take today? So figure out what is that action. And hopefully you've already done that because like I said, we've been talking about this for a long time. Time management. This is one that we talk about a lot in coaching because a lot of people don't really know how to manage their time effectively. We have this problem a lot in our coaching. We talk about time management. We talk about how to manage time effectively. We talk about what's the 80-20? What's the 20% that I can do that's going to get me 80% of my results? So let me just close this door real quick. All right, jumping back in, sorry about that. <laughs> There's a lot going on outside. Okay, so what is, for time management, what is the 20% that I can do that's gonna get me 80% of my results? Most of the time, that's gonna be lead generation. We need to lead generate because doing that little piece of the business is what is going to make us the most money. So when we talk about time management, we're also talking about what are the dollar productive activities? What is it that I need to do to make money? So a lot of times we talk about a lot of our, especially newer agents will talk about, well, I'm spending my time doing business cards. Okay, great. How much time are you spending on that? And how much money is it going to make you? Well, I would argue that business cards in and of themselves aren't going to make you any money. And you can get business cards for free. You can do big, digital business cards. And realistically, you don't have to spend any money on that. And you can then actually um, exchange your business card for their information. That's something that's going to be much more valuable for you and much more time productive. So when you think about time management, what is it that you need to do that's going to help you manage your time better? One of the things that we always talk about in time, in time management is time blocking, blocking off that time. That means that you are going to protect that time in your calendar, no matter what. And so you want to make sure that you are blocking that time off and that you are protecting that time. It's called time blocking. Now, when you're thinking about time blocking, top producers understand that they need to protect these moments that if it's lead generating, they are protecting that time. They're not taking that time to make phone calls about the current transaction that they're in. They're using that time to generate more business. So time management is really, really key in top producers' lives. We have to make sure that we're managing our time because if we don't manage it effectively, we're going to lose the time that we have been given. So it's really, you know, time is a user to lose it kind of commodity. We have to make sure that we are actually using the time wisely. Relationships. This one, uh, realistically, I probably should have put this at number one, but just the order that it came, this, this is how it worked out. Relationships are key for top producers. Not only client relationships, but relationships with other agents, community relationships, professional relationships, relationships at the board level, relationships at the brokerage level, relationships, of course, with their clients, and relationships with future clients. Relationships are number one. This is another thing that we talk about when we're talking about managing time and what's going to be a dollar productive activity relationships always need to be put in your calendar in some way, shape, or form. So when we're talking about how are we going to build our business, real estate is a contact sport. We have got to be in relationship with people. And so we have got to put that in our calendar. We've got to put that in that time management bucket because relationships are key to our business. This is going to be one of those things that gives you 80% of your results. When you look back and all top producers will say this and uh, probably new agents as well, when you look back at the, the um, 
at the transactions you've closed in the last five years, statistically 75 to 80% of those are going to be from relationships. It's from your SOI, your sphere of influence. And it's not necessarily just from people you know, but it's people who know people you know. And so it's your SOI's SOI. So it's important to build those relationships. It's important to put that in your calendar. So how are you gonna calendar that relationship time? For me, this looks like I put, I literally put in my calendar at least once a month, a time to schedule out when I'm gonna go to lunch, when I'm gonna go to coffee. It means that I am intentionally putting as one of my goals each week, one of the things that I'm gonna be held accountable to how often I'm going out with somebody. So for instance, one of my uh, goals this year is to be more involved in the community. And part of doing that is that I want to take the relationships outside of just that community event. And I wanna bring it to something that is outside of that completely. So let's go to coffee, let's go get lunch, let's go paddle boarding, let's do something like that. And I'm, I'm actually putting that into my calendar because relationships are so important. We have to manage our relationships and we have to put that as a top priority. All right, marketing and branding. This is gonna be one that we talk a lot about this year because a lot of people wanna dive into social media. We've been diving into social media, AI, chat GTP, talking about a lot of how that can help you. So marketing and branding is a habit. What's the habit that top producers are um, committing to when we talk about marketing and branding? Well, essentially, it kind of goes back to the time management thing too, but essentially they're saying, whatever your focus is, and a lot of top producers right now focus is social media. So if your focus is social media, and if your focus is that marketing and branding, then what it looks like on your calendar is to be creating a social media campaign calendar where you are saying on Mondays, I post something funny. On Tuesdays, I post something about real estate. On Thursdays, I post um, pictures of home tours because that's the day I go on caravan. On Saturdays, I post about open houses. Whatever that is, you're creating a schedule and you're creating a marketing schedule to brand yourself. So marketing and branding is not a one and done. It's not saying come up with your cool creative logo and then you're done, check it off the list. It's saying we need to market ourselves regularly. And one of the best ways to do that is through social media. So we wanna make sure that we're doing this um, consistently and we wanna make sure that we're doing it in a way that makes sense. So when, again, when we talk about that 80-20, we always need to be going back and saying, okay, what's getting me the engagement? What is getting me people communicating with me back and forth? What are people seeing? Because people need to um, engage with your content on social media to be able to have it pop up in their feeds. So doing things like polls, doing things like asking questions and having people answer them, doing things that are fun or posting funny things. When people engage with you, whether that's laughing at it, sending a funny emoji, hearting it, commenting on it, that tells the algorithms, hey, this, these people like each other and they wanna see more of each other's content. So then when you post your posts about having your listing, those people are going to see it, the people who matter. This is what we're talking about with marketing and branding. And for top producers, marketing and branding is a habit that they are getting into. So the habit that you're getting into is calendaring how you're going to be doing this. And the best way to do that is through social media. Number five, learning and adapting. So, you know, uh, for us at KW, we have family reunion coming up, which is a, um, a annual conference where they have lots of breakout sessions, lots of really great keynote speakers. I think we're having Tony Robbins this year. It's a really, really good time for you to learn. At the same time, 
in addition to learning, top producers are constantly adapting. They're constantly saying, okay, what worked last year in a year that was rough? What didn't work? So let's change, let's adapt, let's grow because you don't want to keep doing the same thing that doesn't work. What's the definition of, of insanity? Doing the same thing over and over, expecting a different result. If it's not working, stop doing it. If it is working, keep doing it. And maybe if it is working, double down. So that's one of the things when we look at, we have to be constantly looking back, which is why it's so important to track we have to be constantly looking back to say, okay, what worked for me last year? What worked for me in the last five years? Because maybe last year wasn't a great indicator, but what do we know about the market coming up? Remember, we're constantly learning. So we know about the market that's coming up is going to be lower interest rates. When interest rates get lower, more buyers come to the market and housing prices go up. So if we have um, more buyers coming to the market, then what does that look like for us? Well, it looks a lot like 2020, 2021. So if we can go back to what did our business look like in 2021? What were we doing? What was working? That's going to help us. That's going to help inform what we're doing today. Now, for you guys who are newer agents, look back at what the top producers were doing in 2020, 2021. What it looked a lot like is building relationships, posting on social media, managing their time well. And so we want to make sure that we're putting in the work. Remember, one of, the, uh, one of our bold laws is be, do, have. And where that comes from is when we look at top producers, we can say, oh, this top producer is doing all of these things. And we say, okay, I'm gonna do all of those things. And we say, I should, I should get what they're getting. But the reality is we have to first be like what they are, be that person, be that top producer. We have to put in the work. We have to do the work. We have to be like them. We have to do what they're doing and then we can have. So often we try and shortcut that. I was um, reminded by one of the agents on here, Zach, um, he was telling me that something that hit him when he was in a training session or something he was listening to was talking about how, you know, when you have a recipe for a cake, you need to add the ingredients exactly as they are. You need to put it in the oven for the right time and the right temperature. If it tells us that we need to put the cake in the oven at 325 for 45 minutes, but we say, no, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm better than that. I know better than that. I'm going to do it for at 500 for 20 minutes. You're not going to get the same result. You're not going to get the same cake. It's not going to be as good. Nothing substitutes the time that it takes. And so we need to put in the time. So we need to be learning and we need to be adapting. This is an all the time forever long thing. We're never going to get to the point where we say, okay, great. I've learned everything. I don't need to adapt. I don't need to change. I don't need to learn anymore. I'm done growing. We're never going to get to that point. We have got to understand that we will always be learning and growing. And so we always need to pour into that as well. So we also have to think about when our resources are limited, where are we pouring our resources into? When we think about learning and adapting, and I say, hey, go to family reunion, it's only $800, and you have to get a hotel room and a flight to Vegas, a lot of you are like, yeah, nope, can't do that. Okay, great. Guess what's free? These workshops are free. Uh, podcasts are free. YouTube videos are free. There's a lot of learning that you can do for free. You can also spend a little bit of money and buy a book. The Millionaire Real Estate Agent, it's not free, but it's pretty inexpensive compared to an $800 conference ticket, right? There's a lot that you can do if you're saying like, I want to be a top producer, but I'm not quite there yet. So I can't spend the money like a top producer. Guess what? I'm going to tell you that's wise. That's wisdom. 
Don't spend the money until you have it. Don't spend money until you make money. And once you're making money, then yes, spend the money because nothing is going to substitute being in person and the networking opportunities you, that you get from a conference like Family Reunion. Hey guys, we're gonna jump into the workshop in just a second, but if you're getting value out of this, be sure to hit the like and subscribe button so you get more videos just like this as soon as they come out. And remember, if you're interested in coaching, reach out to me at the link below. I'd love to talk more about your individual business and how I could help move your business forward. Now let's jump back into the workshop. So let's continue. Number six, networking. Oh, we just talked about that. Networking is so important because <clears throat> when you have a listing, when you have a buyer, and if you're trying to sell this house in a bubble, you have the MLS where you can post it. You have social media where you can, you know, like uh, spot, uh, you can put on a Facebook ad, you can do anything like that. You have all of these things that you can absolutely do. And again, I will say nothing is a substitute for the network that you have. When you bring your listing to a team meeting, or when you say, hey, I have a buyer who's looking for a house at the beach for 2.5 million, somebody's gonna say, oh, actually, I have a listing coming up that's around there. Or I have a listing that is currently live and it's been sitting, but the seller is willing to negotiate, you wanna do something together. When you network, you are building that foundation for your client's success and for your own success. It's, it's never gonna be a waste of time to meet other people. Now, you also wanna keep in mind that you wanna do the dollar productive activities. So you don't wanna spend all your time only networking with people you know, only networking with agents, only going on caravan, only doing those things. You also want to spend your time networking with potential clients. So when you think about, okay, the dollar productive activity, is this going to make me money? All of these things you should run by. What's going to make me money? Not to say like, oh, be money hungry and all that kind of stuff, but we definitely have to choose our time wisely. So when we're networking, we need to say, is this going to make me money? Now it doesn't need to make me money today. But is this going to make me money in the long run? Is this going to be a relationship that I can foster that's going to potentially make me some money moving forward? Is it going to be an agent that I can talk to that can potentially partner with me? Is it going to be an agent that has a lot of houses for the clients that I'm working with? Is it somebody that I'm going to be able to get to know and potentially they can introduce me to a lot of people who are clients that I can make money with in the future. An example, um, now I will say, you know, you could, you could make the argument that anybody you talk to could be a potential client. Yes, absolutely, that is true. And you know that there are some people who are more likely to do that than others. So we've talked in the past about um, finding your ambassadors, finding those soldiers, Ernie likes to say that, finding those soldiers who are going to work for you, who are going to actually bring you that business. I have people in my life who I know, and I know we all do. This is just an example. But I have people in my life who I know, if I say, hey, I'm looking for a handyman, they have a list. And not just a list. They probably have one person that they go to, and they say, they're the best. You have to use them. And it's not just a oh, sure, let me find somebody for you. It's like, no, this is the best. You have to use them. If somebody's like that, then I can know they're going to be somebody who really supports me as well. So when somebody says, hey, I'm looking for an agent, that person is going to say, oh, you have to use Ernie. He's the best. You cannot use anybody else. Ernie is the one to go with. Those are the people that we want to focus our time, energy, and attention on. So when we're thinking about networking, it's not just networking for networking's sake, it's targeted and intentional. It's the same thing about managing our time. We have to manage our time for those dollar productive activities. It's the same thing with networking. 
we're going to be presented with a thousand and one opportunities to do activities on the board, to do activities in our offices, to do activities out in the community. But we have to protect our time and we have to be targeted with that. So if, if you are, you know, like we work with agents who are really, really good about um, being out in the community, they volunteer a lot and that's how they get a lot of business. Absolutely, that's what you should be doing. That's your dollar productive activity. But then we have some other agents who might do the same type of, um, they might do the same type of volunteer opportunities, meaning like time-wise, but they're not talking to anybody when they do these. They're not networking with anybody. That's not going to be a dollar productive activity. So when we network with people, we need to do the same thing. Ernie, I see you have a raised hand. Yeah, I just wanted to add to that real quick. It's, it goes to like people that are giving you a service, like even, even your doctor or what have you, uh, you, you know, you should have the conversation with them. Hey, I mean, you're using them. You have the conversation. Hey, um, I'm a real estate agent. If you need anything, you know, use me. And then, I mean, be even forward to where you expect them to use you, you know, or refer anybody to you. Absolutely. You know, so that's one of the things both that... Ways. Exactly. And we um, underestimate that a lot. But the reality is a lot of these people understand like the hustle, mm -hmm. like a private practice doctor understands you have to get business somewhere. And so a lot of it is word of mouth. A lot of it is, you know, advertising and all of that kind of stuff. And so you have to have that conversation and, you, and they're going to understand where you're coming from. So especially when you're talking about your doctors, your dentists, your chiropractor, your hairstylist, your nail person, these people are going to understand what it means to have to lead generate. They're going to understand working with people and having a reciprocal relationship. So and you can absolutely. set you can set up stuff like, I mean, like you said, your nail person or your, even the restaurants and stuff. If you're sending out flyers, you can get their coupons, put it on the flyer. So you have a uh, content and you're promoting them and they're promoting, promoting you and you can work together that way as well. Yep. It's a win. That's yeah. a really good way for you to go and do some door dropping, door knocking. It shows that you are part of the community mm -hmm. and you are um, basically the one to go to for that area and the resources around there. So yeah. I love that. Networking is a really good one. And top producers do not, um, they really focus in on what they're doing when they're talking about networking. All right. So let's talk about negotiating. So negotiating is definitely something that top producers are really good at. And one of the reasons they're really good at it is because they do it a lot, right? So for agents who may be a little bit newer to real estate or they feel a little uneasy and I don't know what to do with when I'm negotiating, one of the best things that you can do is role play and real play. When you come and you say, okay, this agent said this to me, they said that, they, that their client only wants to counter back with X dollars and it's as is, but my client wants more. What do I do? If you're in coaching, bring that to us, bring that and we'll role play with you so that you understand what are some of the things that you can come back with? What are some of the things, how are some of the ways that you can work with people to negotiate, to get a win-win and to get the best thing for your client. Remember, when you're representing a client, it doesn't matter which side. If you're representing a seller, you're not a buyer's agent. You are a seller's agent. If you're representing a buyer, you are not a seller's agent. You are a buyer's agent. And so you are representing your client. You have to be the one to really be pushing for what their needs are and what their wants are. And so you are the one who has to be really good at this negotiating, but you're focused on what your clients want. So a lot of the times it's about having that conversation with your client and getting down to what's most important. What is it that they want? What is it that that's non-negotiable to them? What is it that would make a home run slam dunk deal? What is like, what are the boundaries of that? What's the highest they're willing to go? What's the lowest they're willing to go? And really talk to them about that. When you have all that information about your client, 
you're going to be able to negotiate at a really high level. And if you're not quite there yet, if you're not quite to the point where you're negotiating all the time, you have to be practicing this. This is a habit of top producers. <clears throat> We've said this a couple of times, um, that something I heard in bold and I loved it. it <clears throat> sorry, I have allergies. Um, what is it? <laughs> Amateurs practice until they get it right. Professionals practice until they can't get it wrong. We need to be practicing. We need to be role playing. We really need to be talking to people um, constantly and doing this because so much of what we do is negotiating. We're not just negotiating with the other side of the table. We're also negotiating with our clients. We're negotiating our commission. Even now when we're talking about the buyer side, we have to negotiate our own commission. We have to help to explain Here's what it looks like. Here's the service that I'm providing you. And then we are having to negotiate to say, here's what I charge and help them to understand most of the time right now, the sellers are still paying this. But if the sellers don't pay, then buyer, you're going to be responsible for this. So that's a conversation that we're starting to have. Now, when we talk about negotiating on the seller side, the sellers understand that they're paying you. But what if you're saying, hey, I'm providing a lot more of a service than just the 6% that's common. Sometimes 5% is what is common. And sometimes some of you agents are like shortcutting yourselves. Let me tell you, top producers don't shut, shortcut themselves. But what if you're providing a service that's even more than that? What if you're asking for 7%? What if you're asking for a higher number than what is common in your area? That takes some real negotiation. That takes somebody who is confident in knowing that. So it's all about practicing and making a habit of negotiating. Brittany? Yep. Okay. Um, do you have any um, uh, specific tools that we can look at to uh, Im improve our negotiating skills? The tools that I would say are going to be uh, the scripts practicing scripts because there are um, objection handlers in there. There's all kinds of things that are common for specifically talking to clients. Now, if you're talking about negotiating with the agents, it's really case by case. And so we don't have anything that's like a script to say, here's how you negotiate because everything is so different. It's based on what the sellers want. It's based on what the clients want. It's based on your understanding of the situation. So I would say, no, we don't have something that's kind of like a blanket resource for that. But we definitely do have um, objection handlers for working with clients. And that will be found if you're coaching, if you're coaching with us, that's in the PC toolkit. And that is in the, uh, I think we call it um, discussions or... We can't call it scripts anymore. So it's in some folder in there, one of the main folders. Um, so hopefully that helps you. All well, right. Um, Thank you. I was going to say, you know, the negotiation goes back to number three with the relationships because I always try to set up a really good relationship with the, the listing agent or the buyer agent. And then also find out what's important to their client. Yep. It or goes try to, back you know, try to, to find as much as possible. And it's the same thing about the relationship with your clients. If you're negotiating with your client, if you are talking with somebody that you've never met before and you haven't tried to establish rapport or build any kind of rapport, and you're saying, by the way, I'm charging you 7%, you might have a hard time with that. But if you're building that relationship and helping to explain your value and helping to prove why you're the best at this, then they probably won't bat an eye when you say, okay, it's a 7% because this is all that I'm going to be doing for you. Mm -hmm. So um, you have to know your clients. You have to know who they are and what they're asking for. Um, but the same thing, Ernie, like what you're saying for, if we're talking to the other side of the table, if you're, if you're working with a buyer and you are trying to talk to the listing agent about what they're going to accept, you want to get as much information as possible about their seller 
to say, you know, have they already moved out? Is this something that they're wanting to get rid of? What's the top? Um, what's the lowest you think they'll go? What do you, what are their main concerns? Do they want to do this quick? Do they want a long escrow? Do they want a rent back? What is it that they want? And establishing that relationship, I have literally gotten offers accepted because the agent likes me because mm -hmm. they say, you, you're the only one who called me mm -hmm. as opposed to shooting a text over and saying, I sent an offer. So yeah. Make sure that you're building that relationship. I agree a hundred percent. All right. This next habit of a top producer is one that I like to talk about a lot. And a lot of agents don't like to talk about this at all. Financial management. Managing your finances is key. You are running a business. You are a small business owner. You have got to manage your finances well. And this is a... This is something that a lot of people have a hard time with, even people who have been doing this for a while, even people who've been in the business for five plus years, they still have a hard time managing their finances. And so when we talk about managing your finances, this again goes back to your time management. This should be a, a calendared appointment with you and yourself and with your QuickBooks or your Excel spreadsheet or whatever it is that you use, whatever app you use to be able to manage your finances. You need to be tracking your mileage. You need to be making sure that everything is listed as um, an expense that is a business related expense. You have to get your head wrapped around that. And if you don't know even where to start, we've talked about it in past workshops. So go and find, go to my YouTube channel and find past workshops where we talk about this because this is key. Managing your finances is key. And I will tell you from experience, I know for me, I came from 20 years working in education where I had a W-2. And so going from a W-2 to an inconsistent income, that was a challenge, I will tell you. That is difficult. And so being able to get it figured out and get it dialed in early on in your career is really, really, really key. And top producers understand this. Now I will say, once you, remember, we don't spend money till we make money, but once you're making money, hiring a bookkeeper, hiring an accountant, making sure you have a good CPA, these are going to be great ways to spend your money because most of the time agents, real estate agents are not ones for actually being able to, to manage their finances really well. And so hiring that out is gonna be a good thing to do. Again, not until you're making money, but this will be something that you want to focus on. Now, number nine, exceptional customer service. This is something that helps us stand out from the crowd. Now, this is going to be something for you that is specific to you. It's specific to you and who you are. But what, what is it? We always talk about your unfair advantage, getting your unfair share. So what is it that you do? What is it that you provide that nobody else can? Because I'll tell you, if you say, well, I'll come and I'll help you get the best price for your house and I will, I'll be here and I'll do open houses for you and I'll put a super lock box on for you. Great. That's what every single agent is going to do. What are you going to do differently? What's going to help you stand apart? One of these is really going back to number three, the relationships. It's really going back to helping build those relationships. So for some of you, that's going to be the exceptional customer service might be that you have great communication and that you are really exceptional at communicating. For some of you, it might be that your systems are on point and you do not miss a beat because of that. For others of you, it's going to be your team that you have behind you. For others of you, it's going to be the network that you have and the resources that you have at your disposal. But what is it that is your unfair advantage? We talk about this a lot in coaching because we want to identify, we want to help you identify what is your unfair advantage so you can claim your unfair share. We want to make sure that you understand this 
and that you can communicate it because this is part of your value proposition. This is part of what you and only you can bring to this experience. So what is that? And I'm, and I'm really going to leave it at that because we're not going to be, I'm not going to be able to dive into what is it that will make you shine. I know some on this call, um, Krista, she is a, she's great at interior design. So that might be something that's her unfair share. She can provide that for her listing, uh, for her listings. She can say, hey, I can help work with you for free. And that's part of her exceptional customer service. For others of you, you're really, really, really good at door knocking. I know one of our agents is like a master at this and he gets business from door knocking. So what is it that's gonna get you your unfair share? And then number 10, mindset and resilience. Real estate is a tough business. I'm gonna be real. It's tough. And if you're not resilient, it's gonna be even harder. <clears throat> and if you have a bad mindset, if you focus on limiting beliefs, if you say, well, I can't do that. So-and-so can do that because they're a top producer. So-and-so can do that because they have this huge network. So-and-so can do that because they have done, been doing this for 25 years. If that's your mindset and you can't get past that, you're not going to make it in this business. But if you say, I can do this because... What's your unfair advantage? What's your exceptional customer service that you can do? If you can be resilient in this business, if you can build these habits, if you can set goals, if you can manage your time, if you can build relationships, if you understand marketing and branding, if you can learn and adapt and network and negotiate, if you can manage your finances, and if you can provide that exceptional customer service, you're going to do well in this business. But it, it's, it takes time and it takes work. A lot of times people get into real estate because they're like, oh, I want to manage my own calendar. I don't want a boss telling me what to do. Well, guess what? You just traded one boss for 35 bosses because every single client is going to be telling you what to do. They're going to be telling you how they want to run things. It's your job to be able to communicate well with them and to build that relationship. So we have to be resilient. We have to have that mindset. This is one thing that coaching does for us is it helps to reset that mindset. It helps us to get in a room with a bunch of people who are going through the same thing and say, how are you getting through? How did you get through 2023? How do I be successful in 2024? How do I be resilient? How do I make it through? All right. So we talked about the habits of top producers now let's jump into command. All right, so let's talk about jumping into command. How can we do a lot of the things that we talked about in command? So I'm going to go through a list of things, and then I'm going to jump into command and show you very quickly, because we only have about 15 minutes left. So this is not a training on how to do it in command. And remember that I have lots of training videos about how to do this stuff in command on my YouTube channel. And you can find stuff on YouTube. I mean, you can find tons of stuff on YouTube. So just a quick snapshot, quarterly call plan. This is gonna help you manage those relationships. Remember, a quarterly call plan is something that it's a smart plan that you can set up. It reminds you to call. This is how we are the tech enabled agents. We are, it's not an automated text that goes out to your SOI that says, hey, I'm still around. Do you know anyone who wants to buy and sell? It's a reminder for you to connect, whatever that looks like. You want to go to lunch? You want to go to coffee? You want to just give them a call? You want to shoot them a text? You want to comment in their, on their Instagram page? Whatever it looks like for you and your relationship, this is a reminder to reach out in whatever that looks like. This is a fantastic way. If you guys are new to command, this is the number one smart plan you need to have, your quarterly call plan. So, yep. So when you set up the quarterly call, uh, call plan, like if you're going through, do you, do you, I mean, do you set that up as, like when you talk to somebody or do you go through your contacts and set them up periodically? Because you can't have them 
all set up at once. So okay. there is a way to stagger them. Good question. Okay. There's a way, like if I'm bulk adding all of my contacts into command and I say, I need to put 200 people on this quarterly call plan, mm -hmm. I can say stagger the start. So I only have five coming to me a day or two coming to me a day or 10 coming to me a day or 50 coming to me a day. Whatever you want to do, you can create that stagger. And then moving forward, when you meet somebody as a one-off or two-off, like walking your dog or at the park, then you put that you can put them in your command on your phone and put them on that quarterly call plan right then. And then it's just three months later, that's when it's going to come on. Mm -hmm. So if you do a bulk entry, you are able to stagger them. That's in the smart plan itself. Yeah. So when you do, if you go on and you say, okay, I want to add, let me just show, let me just give you an example. Let me go into my contacts and I say, I want to select all the people who are on this list, select all of them. Then I can go to actions, go to um, add to a smart plan. And if I add them to that smart plan, let me search for it. Quarterly call plan. And I add them to the quarterly call plan. I'm not going to do it. But if I add them to that quarterly call plan, it's going to prompt me and say, do you want all of them yeah, to come right now? Or do you want to Got it. All right. Good Thank question. You. This literally is the number one smart plan that you should have set up. So if this is the one thing that I can like tell you you should have, this is what you should have. The neighborhood nurture is the number two smart plan that you should have set up. The neighborhood nurture is a smart plan that sends your, um, whoever you put them on, whoever your SOI is or anybody that you reach out to, it's going to send them a neighborhood update. And you don't have any control of what this neighborhood update is, but you have control of the area that you're telling command to pull it from. So if you say they live in this River Park neighborhood, then anything that comes on for that month in River Park is going to be sent to them to show them this is what's going on in your neighborhood. Now, keep in mind, it takes 36 touches for you to be, you know, like on the forefront of your clients' minds. So if you have a quarterly call plan that's four times a month or four times a year, if you have a neighborhood nurture, you can do it either monthly or bi-monthly, which really is to every two weeks. So if you say, okay, every two weeks, that's now 24 times a year, you're getting really close to that 36 touch with just two smart plans. Then if you plan maybe two events in the year, you get another one. Guess what? Then if you do a newsletter, which I think we talk about too, if you do a newsletter, that's another 12 touches. If you do a monthly newsletter, that's another 12 touches. All of these things you want to make sure that are compounding on each other. Um, the neighborhood nurture, I've only received positive feedback when people get this. So I love the neighborhood nurture, and this is definitely the one you need to set up. Now, I will tell you, you have to have either their address or you have to know in general the small neighborhood where they are because you can't just type in a zip code or put in a random place because it's gonna give them information that they don't care about. So if you don't have their address, you're not gonna be able to put them on this neighborhood nurture, chances are. So um, quarterly call plan, you can do whether you have their address or not. In neighborhood nurture, you need to have a little bit more information. So what did we just do for holiday, for the holidays? We did holiday cards and we got everybody's addresses. This is one of the best ways to use those addresses is to put them on a neighborhood nurture. And now you're in their email box every two weeks showing up for them. <laughs> Excuse me. All right. So the next one, newsletters and postcards. Now, I actually, I've had a lot of people ask about the newsletter. So I do have a video that's coming that's going to tell you how I create my newsletters, because the way that I create mine is once I have a template built, it really takes me maybe, maybe 20 minutes a month to send it out. And that's what everybody feels like they're stuck in, is it takes so long and what's the point of it and all this kind of stuff. 
So <clears throat> make sure that you're using, you know, create the template, take the time to create a template, a couple hours to create that. And then once you have it down, you can send things really, really quickly and of high value. The other thing that Command does are postcards. And I wanna show this to you because I know a lot of people don't realize that Command does postcards and will do direct mail. So if we go into campaigns, let's, let's do like a just listed because that's the fastest, easiest one that we can do. I'm gonna go into campaigns and I'm gonna, uh, we wanna do a direct mail. So I'm gonna go to create campaign and I'm gonna say direct mail. Now, again, remember this isn't a training, so I'm gonna go fast. All right, sample, and we're gonna advertise a listing. And then we're gonna create the campaign. So let's just pull this one up. Um, we're gonna select this listing. You can search for whatever listing you want. Um, and then we have that listing. So now it's gonna automatically create this for us. Now it's gonna be a default template or we can upload a custom template. So if we say, no, 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 I wanna create my own postcard on Canva or on Photoshop or whatever, great, do that and then upload it. You just have to make sure that it is the right dimensions. So that's, that's the hardest part, I would say, is making sure it's the right dimensions. Once you have that, super easy to upload. So we have all of this information here. Let's put it in. Uh, so it has the listing price, listing status, let's say just listed. And then it's going to pull all of the information from the MLS. The listing photo, um, we can upload an image or I can choose from the listing images. And it's gonna, it's telling me that it's not the right um, uh, pixel or whatever, but I'm gonna use it anyway for these purposes. Here's my picture, my information, let's say save. Oops, required field. Okay, this is my phone number. There we go, save. And let's see, it's going to say we're over. So let's take some of this off. Okay. Some of this off there. Now we're good because it was telling us we were over the allotted amount. Save. Okay. Yes, we're going to use the image even though it's a low resolution. We're going to confirm our market center is this. <clears throat> and then I need to put in verify the address. Yep, let's confirm. And we are done. So when I go to targeting, I can say that I want it to be around this neighborhood or I can target my database. If I want to say just send it to people I know, I can do that too. So maybe if I wanted to send it a Christmas card or something like that, I could do that. Um, but I want to target this area. And then we, we change our budget, however we want our budget to be. Let's say we want to send 200 cards out first class, you can see that it's going to have an estimate of how much it'll be. This price includes printing, postage, mailing, everything. Nothing comes to me. It all goes out through command. We can uh, add a QR code for tracking. We can do a landing page. So if I've already created a landing page, then we can do <clears throat> uh, that landing page. So if they scan it, it'll go to that landing page and then I'm able to track who has scanned this. So there's a lot that it does for you. And then if we go to configure targeting, we can say yes, create this campaign. We keep going through this. Now we can say we can target the specific homes. I want to target single family homes. And then it's going to show me maybe I maybe I don't want to target the homes that have just recently been sold. So instead of 2024, maybe I say 2022 and later. So you can see that you can really target specifically what these, uh, what these are. And then we can go to next and uh, all that will do is confirm all of our payment and all of that. So I wanted to show that to you because it's super quick and easy. Actually, hold on, because if I go to next, it'll show us a uh, you can see what this comes out as. So it's like done for you. If And again, if you don't like this, you just go on and upload a PDF that you've already created somewhere else. But this is a quick and easy thing. How long did that just take me to do? 
It was really fast. So um, this is something that a lot of people don't realize that you can do in command, but it's going to help with staying in contact. It's going to help with managing your time. It's going to help with all of these things that remember, this is what top producers do. Goal tracking. We have talked so much about goal tracking in command. And one of the most important things that it does in command is remember, it helps you identify how much do you want to make? And based on how much you want to make, it's going to convert how many sales you need. And then it's going to work backwards to tell you, okay, here's how many appointments you need. That's what's going to be the key. We need to focus on appointments. Top producers focus on the appointments they have. So we want to focus on appointments. KW Connect is the last thing that I want to point out to you guys. So if you go on to command, you can see up at the top, there's either command or connect. So if I click on, uh, yes, that's fine. So if I click on connect, it's going to take me to a whole different page. This is where there's a ton of learning resources for you. You, there's a class on lead generation. You can see um, KW University. There's all kinds of stuff that you can do. Um, level up your lead generation, command your business, color of real estate, lots of things that are available to you here. And it's just in this connect. So when you are feeling like you need to have a deep dive in command or level up some of the things that you're, you're focusing on, come to connect. Because when we talk about learning and adapting, this is a really good tool for you to use. And it's actually something we don't talk very much about. All right, let's talk about how to win. What's important now? So remember, we talked about relationships. The best way to grow your business is to grow your SOI, grow the people that you know. If you feel like you don't know enough people, then grow your SOI, meet more people. What are you gonna do? How are you gonna meet more people? Maybe it's that you're going to join a community group. Maybe it's that you're going to start volunteering somewhere. Maybe it's that you're gonna do more open houses. Whatever it is, get into relationship because top producers have relationships and they focus on that. Focus on one thing, master that and then move on. Remember, we talk about the one thing a lot. The one thing that you need to focus on is the thing that's going to knock over all the other dominoes. What's the one thing that you can do such that everything else is easier or unnecessary? So what is that one thing? For most of you, I'm thinking it's probably going to be on relationships. And then number three, take action. What is that one thing that you're focusing on? Is it in your calendar? Do you have a plan for it? Your calendar, mastering your calendar, this is a top habit habit of a top producer. You have to master your calendar. All right, and then as promised, the bonus, the final bonus for you guys, we have smart plans built for you. So if you go into searching your smart plan library, if you search PCA smart plans, they are ready to go, ready to use smart plans for different things. This is for anybody. You don't have to be in PC coaching. You have access to this because you've come to this, uh, to this workshop. So go into your smart plans and search the smart plans for PCA. And it's going to have a bunch of things that are ready to use. You can edit them to be whatever you want it to be. That's specific to you and your business. But these are going to be really helpful to get you started so that you don't have to feel like, what am I doing? I don't even know where to, where to start. So that's your little bonus for you. And then I'm going to be doing a workshop for uh, buyers and sellers this Thursday at 6 p.m. So if you have buyers and sellers, remember this is a time for you to call your sphere without fear and invite them to something that we're doing. It's a webinar so people can come from the comfort of their own homes. It's at 6 p.m. It's 6 to 7 Come and let's talk about 2024 and what is what's going to happen for your uh, for your clients. Remember, if if you invite your clients and they come, I'm going to give them straight back to you. This is not a time for me to take your clients. This is a time for you to call them and let them know that we have something going on. It's the last Thursday of every month, which is going to be this coming Thursday. 
And then finally, of course, if you have any questions about coaching, feel free to reach out. I would love to help you. Remember, we're not just the new agent training ground. We are here for you to help grow your business. If you're stuck, if you're not capping, if you feel like you just need a little bit more accountability, we are here for you. Next week, we're going to talk about mastering your listing presentations. The next week, we're going to be talking about mastering your buyer presentations. This is going to be key. When we talk about figuring out how to negotiate, your listing presentations, your buyer presentations are where to start. So come next week, same time, same place. Um, it's in here. I'm going to be live in the Oxnard training room and also, of course, on Zoom. And with that, I want to answer, let me make sure there's nothing on. Um, oh, we have somebody, Ernie put in the million dollar real estate agent is 20 bucks on Amazon. I think it's even cheaper when you are um, doing uh, it on Audible. And then um, Cindy, thank you. The VCAR is offering a class called Accredited Buyer Representation on January 30th and 31st. Thank you for that because now... Also keep in mind, not all of us are in Ventura, but for the ones that are, your board has a lot of resources for you. No matter where you are, your board has tons of resources. Take advantage of what they have to offer. Take advantage of what your market center has to offer. KW, you're here because there are so many training opportunities. So take advantage of what there is. Well, I hope that helped. And remember, I'm here every Monday at 11.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time to help you move your business forward. Join me in the weekly workshops where you can come live and get your questions answered in real time. I would love to see you there. Register at the link below. And remember, if you have questions about coaching or want to dive in or even just want to have a call to me to see how you can grow your business, schedule a call with me in the link below. I'd love to help. In the meantime, if you're getting value out of this, be sure to like and subscribe. Thanks for staying for the whole thing. Check out the other videos that we have that are sure to move your business forward. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.